Hi, it's Rich with Richbound Photography, Sacramento, California. And I thought it'd be a nice little short tutorial to just go over some of the equipment that we all are using, or a lot of us are using, and that I think you should be at least considering. Uh, but these things are really hard to find in your local shop. So unless you're from LA or New York, you're really not gonna see the things like geared heads, um, bubble level, uh, like really right stuff with a bubble level in the clamp. Um, tilt shift lenses, L brackets. So you're going to certainly be able to find some of this stuff, but really I want to just show you, and I think you got to take my word for it to hopefully you'll see the value in it and you'll try it out. So I want to start off by just saying a lot of people start, and I've been doing real estate photography for about 12 years, seriously for about 10. And I've just progressed in my equipment and I of course started with a ball head. I didn't start with a nice one like this really really right stuff BH55. It's, it's maybe the finest or one of the finest ball heads in the business uh, but I found that a geared head or something like this is going to be better for what we do. Now I wouldn't use a geared head if I was shooting models or portraits um, I would use a geared head if I was shooting real estate, architecture, design photography, even food photography. I find that the geared heads really offer you just precision. It is minimal, minimal movements, and you can do um, exactly where you need to put it. And that is super important for real estate photography because we're dealing with verticals being straight, we want to have exact precision. We don't want to have it moving. So imagine you're putting a lens on a, let's say you're putting this camera um, on a ball head. You are going to suffer from, let me see if I can do this without a tripod, without dropping the thing. So this over here. We have a ball head and if I'm moving it, I'm going to loosen up the lever and I can have a little bit of tension on it so it doesn't completely flop. But if I want to get it perfectly right on, it's much harder for me to get it right on and have it stay there. And when I tighten it up, there's a very good chance it's going to move a little bit. I'm not going to leave this here because it'll fall over. But with a geared head, it is precision movements and it will stay right where you put it. So effectively, it's going to be much easier and much funner and much more enjoyable to work with, but it's also going to be faster because you're going to have the ability to set your level perfectly straight without having to um, adjust this. Just It's actually really hard. And I have a uh, bubble level on my Really Right Stuff clamp, so I can look at the bubble level which is the key to my having straight verticals, but it's much harder. It takes me about three, four times longer to get it perfectly aligned. So for me, a geared head and the precision it brings is certainly worth the investment. Now you can get geared heads from Manfrotto starting at like 165. I don't know the model number, but they start at 165 about. And they have the next one up is the Manfrotto 410, and it's called the Junior. And I don't know why they call it the 410, because the bigger one is 405. I would think this would be the 405, and the, the little one would be 405, and this would be better because it's 410. But that's not the way it is. But I found that the 410 was harder to turn, smaller knobs, and it had a tendency to loosen up and get a little bit of wobble the more you used it after a year or two. Now there's two people out there that will have success with it for many years, but I personally went through two of them and I stepped up to the Manfrotto 405 and this is the big bad boy and I will say it's pretty heavy and it's pretty big, but it has great big knobs and you can really turn it easily. It has a big um, geared knob or a uh, release knob which you can turn it and you can move it fully like that and get it in the ballpark and then you can do this the, the smaller um, knob and you can get precision uh, movements out of it it has three-way uh, geared pan it can go pan this way geared it can go tilt 
and it can go, um, I don't know, the opposite of tilt. I guess tilt on two axes. And uh, it is a wonderful, I will say, the 405 I found on Craigslist and I found it a great deal, although it's really hard to find on Craigslist. I just happened to luck out twice and found two of these on uh, Craigslist over the years. But I found it to just be a little big and it really is a little um, harder to move than I really cared for. It was uh, just not my choice. And it, it, don't get me wrong though, if you can afford a 405, which is about $500. And at the beginning, it seemed crazy gaga to spend $500 on a head. Now it's like, oh yeah, I totally understand because we're so involved with adjusting and moving and, and moving our tripod every shot. And we're on a tripod all day long. You might as well get what you enjoy the most. So the 405 was my choice for a long time, but I eventually went, let me switch this out of the way. I eventually went to the Arca Swiss D4. Now this you won't find in a store. You're going to have to order it and you can order it from Adorama in my show links. I'd sure like it if you do that. But you can get this geared head. It's the D4 and it comes in different configurations. And one of them is the D4 um, uh, head with the um, Arca Swiss clamp and they have two Arca Swiss clamps. Now this is not the Arca Swiss clamp and I'll tell you about it in a second. But the Arca Swiss clamp comes in a lever, um, lever action, which I like very much. I've become very accustomed to my Really Right Stuff lever clamp for the last 10 years. I've had several of these and they're great. And uh, so I recommend level, uh, lever clamp. But they also have the screw clamp, which is more traditional. And you can find um, both of those on B&H, uh, Adorama, and uh, wherever you want to go shopping for it. Um, and then I actually wanted to replace the Arca Swiss. I didn't want the Arca Swiss clamp, and it's just personal. The main thing was is the Arca Swiss D4 has two bubble levels, and they're on the sides here. Very hard to see. You almost have to look sideways to see them. And I found that I just wanted the bubble level right here to be um, accessible, easy to see, in dark light, so I find this bubble level is just right on like 98% of the time. But the problem is, is um, Arca Swiss glues on, and now please take this with a grain of salt. This is what I've been told by um, uh, their, the warranty or the um, repair facility. Um, it is glued on so you cannot just unscrew and replace the clamp, which I guess they do it for warranty reasons. Uh, so people aren't playing around and screwing up this precision, uh, precision head. But personally, I wanna be able to switch clamps if I have. I have several different uh, clamps and I use them for different things and I really would wanna do it. So I had to send this to Precision Camera Works back east. I'm in California, I forget exactly where they are. They're like Minnesota or so, but you can actually get them. They will sell you the uh, really right stuff, clamp, lever clamp or whatever you want, and they will do the work for you. Remove the Arca Swiss clamp, or actually I bought this without a clamp on it, and uh, remove it, and then they'll put the really right stuff clamp on there and you're still under warranty. So to me, this combination is the best of both worlds and I'm extremely happy. Okay, let's get into the D4. Now the D4 is, um, I just, without the clamp, I think it was about $800. So it's a lot of money and I will agree. Um, but it's like, how could, you, we could never afford a Maserati or a Ferrari or a um, Jaguar for a precision car, but we can really save up our money and I was able to find it in my budget to go with the, the best, the best, in my opinion, the best geared head made. Now they make, Arca Swiss makes a cube, which is another um, uh, another clamp, very different than this, but it's similar in, in not in function, but in, in what it does. But it's about $1,800 and it's just very different. And I like the D4. It's small, it's light, which is really a big deal. And I didn't think it was gonna be a big deal when I first got it, but it is. 
It is half the weight of this 405. This is about five pounds, this is about two and a half pounds. The only thing it doesn't have that this has, this has a geared pan. So you can turn it this way and this way, geared. This only has a knob on it, and I can then um, rotate it this way. And I do it by hand manually. But to be honest with you, it's really not, uh, it bothered me at the beginning, but it's really not a problem after you use it for a while. And it's actually, I think I, I like it a little bit more because I don't have to really deal with panning as much. I'm more concerned with tilting and um, it, it, moving it on the two axes, going panning this way and tilting this way. So I find that um, the, geared, the geared pan is not a big deal. And they actually make a geared pan for the um, for this part. Um, I know I've seen it in Europe. I haven't seen it in Europe, but I've seen it them selling it in Europe. Um, but to be honest with you, I don't think I'd spend another two or three hundred dollars on the the panned clamp, or I forget what this part would be called. But anyway, don't worry about that. If you want the precision and the best. The D4, and a lot of us have gotten these D4s, and I'm really, really, really happy. Well, I'm really, really happy with my really, really right stuff clamp, and I'm really, really happy with the D4. Um, there are two, there are four knobs on this uh, for adjusting it. One, the round knob is to do micro adjustments just like this, and um, you, you have the round one. You can see that there. And then you have the oblonged um, uh, knob, which you can loosen up, and it actually will then work like a ball head, which is really cool. So you can get it like off and in the ballpark, and then you just do the, you do the minor adjustments here. I personally never, almost never use this, but it's there in case you want it. And at the beginning, I was a little, I didn't understand where, it felt really weird with the with the knobs, especially coming from a uh, 405, which you get used to. It's different here, but I love it, and I've gotten used to it, and it is my day-to-day, -day, and I just wouldn't give it up for anything. So really, really dig it. Now, I will say these bubble levels here, there you go, you see that there? The bubble levels on this axis, axis and this axis are actually really good when I'm doing outdoor photography or twilight photography when the camera is at height of my eyes or higher where I can't really see the bubble level I do like being able to see the sides of this uh, clamp uh, so I could see um, if it's level or not but honestly um, when I'm inside shooting and I'm much lower I'm around I self tell people I, I'm at about my belly button that is where I normally need to see it, and having the bubble level on the top is much, much easier and makes a lot more sense. So we've gone from a ball, a ball head, which, you know, ball heads are great, and you know what, if you're not going to switch, I said, go with a ball head, but I don't know anybody, and if you're out there, you can send me a message or say I'm crazy, but I don't know anybody out there that's gone to a geared head, any geared head, and went back to a bubble level. I mean, a ball head. I don't think there's anybody out there. So that's just me. And uh, I, I would stick by that. But I think it's worth worth the leap of faith to go get, even if you go get an entry level um, geared head, you will get the benefits of the, of the geared head. And it's just the way it is so precise. And you will see very quickly just how great it is. So I say get a geared head and um, then... You can decide later if you get into it, if you have a little extra money to burn, you can move up in in um, in quality, and not necessarily quality, but in performance, let's say performance, um, to the D4 or the 405. Now, I will say one thing about tripods and heads. If you buy a really good one at the beginning, you're probably not going to have to buy another, another one for many, many years. Um, and it is a it is an investment as opposed to a camera and a lens is not such an investment because that will get outdated in two three years. Uh, you can use it for longer, but you'll be jealous of your friends using the best and the newest. So I really recommend um, getting a good geared head. The most you can spend um, on a tripod and a geared head, but we're not. 
going into tripods today. Okay, so I wanted to show you, I've done this uh, review on other, um, other tutorials, but I just want to say you really want to get an L bracket because if, let's say, I am um, doing a horizontal shot, and granted, we uh, normally do horizontal shots in real estate photography. It's here, but if I wanted to switch it over to a landscape orientation, and I did not have the ability to turn it on its side and have a clamp here or a a, um, a bracket here, this is an Arca Swiss compatible. Arca Swiss, by the way, is not only a company, it's a size and a dimension. So when somebody says your clamp is Arca Swiss compatible, they make them in all different makes and models and brands. But this is Arca Swiss compatible, and this happens to be a Sunway Photo L bracket. And I will take this off, and I'll tell you a couple of reasons why I like this Sunway Photo. For years, people know that I only recommended really right stuff. Um, bubble levels, clamps, and L brackets. And I, I still recommend only the really right stuff. And I am not paid by really right stuff. It's just what I believe in and what works for me. But the L brackets, I was always going with the really right stuff because it just felt good and it was nice. And it's just a piece of metal, but you could get a, a, an L bracket for $30. What's the difference? Well, I felt the really right stuff brackets were great, but when I went and bought my A7 III, I had to spend, I would have had to spend, I think it was $220 on an L bracket, and I said, that is the limit. I'm not going to do it. So I found the Sunway photo on um, Amazon. Let's see if you can see that. There we go. Sunway photo on Amazon, and they're made to these particular bodies. So this one is, this uh, L bracket is made for the A7 III or the A7R3. And it's just got grooves and everything that fit the bottom of your camera, which is actually important because then you don't have any twisting. It really has a good handle on there. But the Sunway Photo, I think, was 55. And I've got it, if you look at my kit page, it's uh, www.kit.com slash photography. You'll see all my stuff and you'll see the Sunway Photo. I recommend it. I cannot recommend it highly enough. So the another thing it has, which I really like, is it doesn't use an Allen wrench. Let's see if we get this in focus. Ooh, come on. There we go. It's got this, um, I can use my fingers to tighten it up. So, and you can also use a screwdriver there, but I really like it because it, I can put it on and off without an Allen wrench and it is so nice. And uh, I'm just gonna leave it here. I'm not gonna do this here. But um, should leave that for you to see. So um, you got your L bracket, you got your um, ball head. And by the way, if you are getting a ball head and you want to use it for landscape photography, portraits, just traveling around, they make these really right stuff, makes these in all different sizes. This is the big bad boy, the BH55. And I always wanted one. I found it used on Craigslist and I love it and I finally have it. Don't use it that often, but if I want to put on a big lens, it's very heavy, but it's very stable. I recommend the Really Right Stuff. You can see Really Right Stuff logo is uh, right there. And um, the next thing is, is going to be the Manfrotto 405. And uh, you can see it here. Oh, by the way, out there's a guy named Chris Hainar. And you can see Hainar Photos. He makes this conversion plate for the um, Manfrotto, uh, the Manfrotto heads. And I recommend going to get this conversion plate and uh, you can find that um, under Hainar. It's H-E-J-N-A-R. Uh, and Chris is a great guy. And if you use the uh, code RICH10, R-I-C-H-10, you get 10% off of uh, Chris's, anything Chris makes. Makes wonderful, wonderful conversion plates brackets, L brackets. He makes um, clamps. He is just a master machiner. And uh, he's back east and just a great guy. So check out um, all this stuff. And uh, you know, you're gonna have to take a leap of faith because you're not gonna be able to find it. And last, I'm not really gonna make this a um, tilt shift um, tutorial, but I wanna say I've been using my, um, I am now all Sony after 40 years with Nikon. And uh, I love the Sony, this is a7 III, super, super happy. 
People are asking me, whoa, what's the difference between a crop sensor and a full frame? I want to be a professional. Do I need a full frame? No. I really love, I don't have it here, I really love the uh, A6000. And uh, I use that all the time, almost more than I use the A7 III. I use the A7 III, though, for weddings and sports and high-end shoots and when I'm using uh, tilt-shift lenses and things. But... You don't really need all that stuff in real estate photography. You can get by with um, a crop sensor camera, an inexpensive camera, and you don't have to have super fast focusing, super good ISO performance. You just have to have a good, reliable camera. And my A6000, I got another video tutorial on that if you go searching my YouTube channel. But I really love that camera. And so by no means do I believe that you need to get a full frame camera whatsoever. And I have that seven, uh, I have the 12 millimeter Samyang lens, which is like 279 now, and it's no brainer and I love it. So I'm just saying, you can go with a full frame, you can go with whatever you want. I don't think a camera is the most important thing in real estate photography. Uh, now, when you're going into design photography, maybe yes, a little bit more. If you're doing twilight photography, you want a little better uh, noise, noise uh, level, you want a little less noise. So maybe something like this. But I am now using, um, when I went from Nikon, I went now to Canon Tilt Shift lenses. And this is the 17 millimeter Canon Tilt Shift. And it is absolutely a wonderful thing. It's got a, got a crazy front end. And you would look at that going, oh, there's no way I want that. That'll scratch and break. Well, I'm pretty careful with it, but it has to be to be so wide, 17 millimeters. But this lens, I use it with a, um, I've got the, what is it, the um, Sigma MC11 adapter. And you can see that. And I think it was $145. It's manual, so I don't need focusing. But I'll tell you something. It is such a joy. It doesn't flex. It works great. And I just love it. I have the 17 now and the 24. And I'm sold on them. I actually love the 24, I think, more than the 17. But the 17, you know, a lot of people ask me, um, you know, is 17, is uh, 24 wide enough to shoot a house? Well, yes, it is. But I'll be honest with you. I like the 17 because I can shoot little bathrooms, little rooms. I find that when I, when I was using a 24 millimeter tilt shift, um, I would not be able to really feel comfortable shooting every room in the house. I'd feel it was a little narrow. So I'm not saying you got to shoot ultra wide, but I'm saying I, I prefer the 17. I also really like the 17 because I did uh, extensive testing with my Nikon 19 millimeter, which has a similar front end. And I just found it to be um, really bad with flaring or if you have light coming in from in front of the lens, it's going to possibly cause the image to have a little bit of haze just not going to have a lot of contrast, kind of washed out. I find that the, the Canon, while it does have some of that, it's not nearly as bad, so I don't mind it. I love the way it works physically and mechanically. It just feels so good. It is so easy to rotate right here. So if you're going to go from a horizontal orientation to a vertical, it's so easy to do and really, really nice. I never use the tilt function, which is up here, which I'll show you what that is. Um, I actually have to unlock it, which I love that there is a lock because if you have a tilt shift and you are tilted even slightly, everything's going to come out soft on one side or the other, no matter how much or how little it is. But here you can see how this is working. And I'm not doing a tilt shift review right now. Let me see if you can, how you can see this. Okay, there you go. So this lens has the ability to change perspective on the same, I, I, okay, I might be wrong here, but the same focal length or the focal plane. So it can tilt this way, which can change your focus, your area of focus, your depth of field. You can select focus with this. So it's great for if you were doing food photography, great for if you were doing um, product photography. And I'm not going to go into that because I don't, never use the tilt feature. I've never actually used the tilt feature once on this lens. But, and I'm going to go lock it down again because I want to make sure it does not move when I'm shooting real estate. But then I have the shift. And then you can go up. Let's, let me loosen that up a little bit. There we go. 
And let me see if I can get this here for you. Okay, I'm going to raise it up. There we go. Okay, so you can, oh, it's pretty tough to see. There you go. So it can shift up and shift down. And what that does is if, let's say, you're shooting and you've got a building that's looking up, well, if you tilt your camera up, you're going to get keystoning. And that's going to be um, something that you can fix in, in Photoshop or Lightroom, but you're going to have to crop off the sides. So this allows me to shift up and capture, with my camera level, capture the perspective. The same vertical, the vertical lines will be straight, and it's very difficult to explain and to understand unless you're, you've used it firsthand. But if you've ever thought about it, you may want to rent a tilt shift lens from your, you could probably rent one from your camera shop um, that has a, a deal with uh, lensrentals.com uh, or whatever. So uh, it's something to think about. And I'm not going to really go into a tilt shift in this tutorial, but I will go into one very soon. Okay. So I just, I guess I can wrap it up now and uh, wrap it up now and uh, just let you know that uh, whatever you do get what you can and it's not going to kill you to have any of these these uh, these other pieces of equipment to uh, if you don't have it it's not going to be the end of the world but I want you to just tell you when you get into this game as a career go in it for the long run shoot better uh, get better quality take the time to shoot something that's important do personal projects. Um, really shoot the best you can in a house. Just because you're making a certain amount of money shouldn't mean you're um, looking like this with blinders on and that if, if, you, if you are shooting in longer than 15, 20 minutes, you're not making enough money. Look at it down the road. Shoot better and then you'll get better clients. I say it on every video, but it's true. Then get better equipment. Um, you know, again, cameras are not investments to me. They're investments because I need the tools, but they're just pieces of equipment. Heads and tripods now are, are investments to me. They make my day better. They make it easier. They make just, I get more enjoyment out of my day with a, uh, a geared head. But uh, even my ball head, I get enjoyment out of having a really good one. So if you can afford it, I'd rather see you spend money on a good, um, bubble level, I mean, uh, clamp or, or head or, um, or, you know, tripod than spending it on a lens or on a tilt shift. I think that the support of a tripod and a clamp are, are more, they're going to use it all the time. You're going to really enjoy it. And, uh, I think that's where you put your money at. And, uh, so I think I'm about done here. You can feel free to ask, ask any questions in the show notes. Um, I mean, check out the show notes, but ask any questions and I'll get back to you. As far as tilt shift lenses, um, I'm going to do a full video on that and try and hook up a camera so I can show you exactly what it does and have comparisons and side by sides. So you'll get a better idea. But the best thing you can do is go rent one. So if you can find one, uh, go rent it and try it out on a really a special shoot or something. But have extra time so you can learn to use it. Okay. And uh, I want to ask you to please subscribe to the Rich Baum YouTube channel. And uh, don't forget about our podcasts. We got shootingspacespodcast.com. We got a website also. And uh, be sure to check out my coaching if you need help. I do private coaching. And you can find that information on the, uh, in the show notes. And just send me an email. Tell me what you need help with. I'll see if it, if it works out. And I'll help you out. And the best thing you can do for yourself, if you can, and you have the ability, is come out to California May 13th and to 15th um, and for our two-day workshop in Auburn, California. It's going to be a full two days, hands-on workshop. You can use tilt shifts. You can use L brackets. You can use all these geared heads. We have tons of stuff. We're going to do, um, we're going to do, uh, actually, I'm going to have uh, drone photography demonstrations. We're going to have guest speaker. We're going to have a uh, work with pole photography. We're going to do shooting, composition, um, everything, man. And you're going to get to do it firsthand. Come hang out with me for a couple of days. And I tell you, if you can't do a coaching session or if you can't, you know, join your friends and learn from them firsthand, 
uh, the, the workshop is fantastic. So again, that is May 13th through 15th on, um, in 2019. And uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm sorry, May 13th and 14th apologize. So that information will be in the show notes. So Rich with Rich Mount Photography saying, shoot better, shoot smarter. As I just said, I don't need to tell you again. You guys know it by now. Do the best you can. And I wish you success and happiness. And thank you so much for checking out my YouTube channel. Bye.